So welcome to Trinity Sunday. Uh, Chrissy is going to come forward now. Everyone can sit down. Chrissy is going to read for us our welcome statement. We welcome all who are seeking God's love and grace. We welcome all because God welcomes all. We encourage young children to participate and make their presence known. We come from a wide variety of places on earth and individual spiritual journeys. We are many races and cultures, different sexual orientations, gender identities, and families of various configurations and single people. We are various stages of life, differing abilities and health and economic circumstances. Our unity is in Christ, who calls for us to reject division and discrimination. La gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, el amor de Dios, the love of God, y la comunión del Espíritu Santo, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, sayon con ustedes, be with you all. Let us pray. Holy Trinity, you are a community unified as one in love, as one God, our holy three in one. You are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Keep us steadfast in faith that we may know your endless joy and love. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you in church. Good morning. Enjoy it. I'm glad you're here. It's glad you're here. I'm reading the book of Psalms 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And Jesus never pray. Amen. Amen. All the Son of the Spirit. Thank you, Russell. Okay. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. That's from Psalm 46, one of my favorite Psalms. Knowing God involves stillness and listening. Knowing God involves first reading scripture, then praying, and then listening. Some of you may do meditation. There is a practice in Christianity and in other traditions that's called contemplation. It involves reading scripture, praying, and listening. Be still and know that I am God. I believe in God. That's a statement of faith. That's a creed, and it can be a prayer too. I believe in God. Those are the four, first four words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. We call it the creed from the Latin credo, 
and Deum, I believe in God. The creed then elaborates on the idea that God is three and one. The Apostles' Creed has 112 words in English. The Bible has many images for God. The creed does not necessarily have my favorite images. I love when Jesus speaks of himself as a mother hen. When Psalm 139 has God knitting us. When Jeremiah has God as a potter crafting us. The creeds have been debated fiercely. Debated down to a single letter, literally. The expression, not one iota of difference, refers to a debate over two words which are different in only one letter. The letter being the Greek iota. In another instance, just three words, and the son, to add them, or to leave them off, broke the church between east and west, between Rome and Constantinople. The creeds have been taught to perplexed catechumens and bewildered teens. But those first four words, I believe in God, they say it all. The creed goes back centuries, about 1600 years. And as I said, the Apostles' Creed has 112 words, but with that creed, arguments and questions created by this attempt to explain God led to a new creed to try to settle those disagreements, the Nicene Creed, which has 222 words. The Apostles' Creed believes, begins, I believe in God. The Nicene Creed believes, we believe, in one God. The additional words start to define just which God we're talking about. A hundred words, two hundred words, and then they came up with the Athanasian Creed of six hundred words. We don't use that on Sundays. However long we make our creeds, they never answer all our questions about God, and they never settle all the disputes that arise. I think those first four, those first five words are the most important. I believe in God. We believe in one God. The Jews have a creed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. When Jesus was asked for the greatest commandment, he quoted this from the book of Deuteronomy to say the Lord is one. It's called the Shema for its first word here in Hebrew, Shema. Hear, O Israel. It addresses a community. The Lord gathers a people and forms a community of faith. On Trinity Sunday, we learn that God is a community of three. Three who are so unified as to be one. The Lord is one. God is one. The Jewish creed begins by calling a community to hear then says that God is one, and then says we love our God. The Nicene Creed has us speak as a community, not I believe, but we believe. The Nicene Creed adds that note that our God is one. It might be a good prayer in a time when you are struggling with your faith. Just say it. I believe in God. I believe in you, God. In times of difficulty, you may find yourself saying, I still believe in you. The nice scene replaces I with we, so we say it together. Because sometimes we rely on other people for our faith. And so we say we believe. The nice scene adds one, one God. It also says our church is one. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. And we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. You may wonder why we say we believe in the Catholic Church. For us, the Catholic Church is not just the Roman Catholic Church. And we believe in one baptism. Roman Catholics and Protestants, most Protestants, Protestants and Eastern Orthodox share a common understanding of baptism. 
that our baptism as seen as the same and valid no matter where they happen or who performs them. Just that they use the formula, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the name of the Trinity. I believe in God. After those first four words, the rest is maybe poetry, maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't make sense. They may bring you closer to God or maybe they don't bring you closer to God. The Nicene adds the word one, one God, to make it clear that the Trinity is not clear. It's both three and one. I love Luther's explanation for the creed in the small catechism, the third article. I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with her gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith, just as she calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. This is most certainly true, Luther writes. I believe that I cannot believe, not by my own understanding. Sometimes we question what we believe, and we should. We should question our beliefs from time to time so that our statement means something, that it's true. And sometimes we just say it to see how it feels. I believe in God. Or we say it as a prayer. I believe in you, God. In times of difficulty, we may find ourselves saying, I still believe in you, or I'm trying to believe in you. In Mark's gospel, a man says to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. The quest for faith is unending because it is a living understanding. It is a living relationship. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians says, continue to work out your salvation in fear and trembling. So sometimes we just say, I believe in God as a request, as a trial, as a plea, I believe in God. If you're worrying about matters of faith, if you're worrying about language of theology, I love Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and trust that God gives us the faith. Be still and know that we believe and God will help our unbelief. Be still and know that we believe that we cannot believe on our own. Be still and know that I am God. So today is a good day to have people affirm the creed. And I did not plan that. <laughs> it just happens to be the day that we're having five people stand before us and affirm that they believe in that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I want to just say hello to Tarina, and I want to say hello to, I guess, Caitlin, and also Chip and Patty are with us online. And if you all would join together, following on page five, and reading the full print, Evan, Gail, and Russell, Merrill, and Kathy come to us from other churches and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism and become members of this congregation. We rejoice that you now desire to make public profession of your faith and assume responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. Now, therefore, I ask you, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus. Everyone here together, responding with the same bold print. 
the faith in which we baptize. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God the Son of God. Who was? Who was in the Bible, Holy Spirit, Lord, Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, crucified and died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he arose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seen at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lesson. Amen. It's like one more question. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in your holy baptism to live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. To proclaim the good news of God in Christ, the word and deed. To serve all people, following the example of our Lord Jesus. And to strive for justice and peace for all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help me. People of God, gather here for them. Do you promise to support these siblings and pray for their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God and us in God. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brother in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and prayers to God and proclaim the good news to all. Let's show them some love. Peace. Peace. With. What? You. You. In you, God Almighty, we have our preservation and our bliss. In you, Christ, we have our restoring and our grace and our Savior. You are our mother, brother, and Savior. In you, Holy Spirit, is plenteous and marvelous grace. You are our clothing. For love, you wrap us and embrace us. You are our maker, our lover, our keeper. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Teach us to believe that by your grace, all shall be well. And all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Go oh, in peace, welcome the stranger. Thank you. I have a bunch of strangers right now. <laughs> Can you put this in my office before it gets sold? And you want to put him in the office?